The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into a Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child in her womb leapt, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Saviour, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward all generations will call me blessed, but the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name, and his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm, he has routed the proud of proud of heart. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things, the rich sent empty away. He has come to the help of Israel his servant, mindful of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months, and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. I remember when I was a child, really, really excited for Christmas. So when Christmas would come around, the days leading up, I'd be so looking forward to the day, and particularly Christmas Eve, we'd go to Mass as a family, and the anticipation of Christmas Eve was almost too much to bear. This child was just so excited. And all the elements, the, the Mass, the presents, the family, the food, um, we had so many guests around at Christmas, I was always on an airbed, that was part of the fun, you know, being on an airbed in someone else's room. It was just a different time, I was so excited for this day. I was full of anticipation. And I woke up, the day itself, Christmas Day, would always be better because it was filled with that anticipation. Had I just woken up one day, my parents woke me and said, by the way, it's Christmas, you know, we nobody said it's just Christmas Day today. Well, it would have been nice, but not as good. Because the anticipation wouldn't have fueled it. There's something similar going on in the Gospel today. So, our lady visits her cousin Elizabeth, and we hear that as soon as uh, Mary's greeting came to Elizabeth, the child leapt. And again, Elizabeth said, the child leapt for joy in my womb. When? The moment your greeting reached my ears. Our lady's words lead Elizabeth and lead her child to anticipation, the joy of anticipation. What is to come? Jesus Christ is to come. Jesus Christ is to be born. Jesus Christ, the Messiah we've been waiting for, the one who's going to set us free, inaugurate a new kingdom. John the Baptist in the womb knew that. And it's our lady's greeting that, that was the trigger. So we can say our lady herself is the woman of anticipation. That's what I want to say today. That she lived her whole life in anticipation of the Lord's promise to her. So that the assumption of Our Lady is not some, um, some event that happened at the end of her life, we think, gosh, where did that come from? And she was surprised by like Christmas Day coming out of the blue. No, it was the moment she had waited for her whole life like a magnet. The Lord loved her so much, drew her to himself, so that it makes perfect sense that the end of her life 
She is drawn to him, body, and soul. As you and I are called to do, it's just that magnet attraction is off with us because of our sins, because of the things we've put in the way. Whereas our lady, not being in sin, had such a pure attraction to the magnets of the Lord that at the end of her life, she is assumed, she is taken, she is received into the glory of the Lord in heaven. I want to say this is the virtue of hope, Christian hope. We read in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, hope is the theological virtue by which we desire the kingdom of heaven and eternal life as our happiness. Placing our trust in Christ's promises and relying not on our own strength, but on the help of the grace of the Holy Spirit. To be hopeful, to be like our lady, to expect is not the same as to be optimistic. To say, it'll probably be, it'll be okay. You know, I'll set up a plan, it'll probably be okay because I'm an optimistic kind of person. And then it collapses and I think, well, the project didn't work, or my plan failed, or whatever. Why is that, Lord? Why, why did it not work? That's optimism. Hope is to say, I know the Lord is in this. Whatever this is, whatever this experience in my life is, I know the Lord is here. And I know the joy he's calling me to. That we should live our lives every day in expectation of heaven. That's our I love. That's where we're going. How aware am I that I am called home one day? That here is not my home. But joy with God in heaven is my home. That what is already given to our lady is the promise given to all of us as well. When we're purified of that sinfulness, of the obstacle we put in the way to the Lord's grace, when, like, when he purifies that, we too will be with the Lord, body and soul. The resurrection of the body will be living in our lives, at the end of time. Pope Francis, commenting on this gospel last year, for this, this feast day, talks about dreaming. This is like we, we should start dreaming more as Christians, dreaming of home. He says, Mary exalts the Lord's greatness. She praises him, saying that he is truly great. It is important to seek great things in life, says Pope Francis. Otherwise, one becomes amused by many trivialities. Mary shows us that in order to live a happy life, we should put God in first place, because he alone is great. That when we make our plans, our, our little um, material dreams, when we make those, number one, we set ourselves short. We set up something so small that can never fulfill. But only when we set our eyes on the Lord, set our eyes on our home in heaven, where we pray and we go one day, if we're being faithful to the Lord here, that's the promise given to us. That's where the Lord wants to be with us. That's where our heart should be. So the final thing I'll say, Pope Benedict a few years ago wrote a letter on the virtue of hope called Space Salvi, Hope Saves, or Saving Hope. He talks about the same thing that Francis talks about, desire or dreaming. And he says that when we pray, sometimes we don't get what we all want, and we think, gosh, it didn't work, I didn't do it right, God's not listening to me, God's abandoned me. But when he says, no, that's not how we understand it to Christians. Instead, St. Augustine says, defines prayer as an exercise of desire. Man was created for greatness, for God himself, we were created to be filled by God. But his heart, man's heart, is too small for the greatness to which it is destined. It must be stretched, he says. And he quotes St. Augustine. By delaying his gift, God strengthens our desire. It's like Christmas Eve for me. Christmas Day would have been no fun had I not been stretched by desire. Maybe it's similar for you. Some things we look forward to. Um, birthdays or events or holidays, whatever it is, we enjoy them more because we've been stretched, because we've had to wait for them. By delaying his gift, God strengthens our desire. Through desire, he enlarges our soul, and by expanding it, he increases its capacity for receiving it. That is also where we feel God's not listening to me. What God is saying is, Opening you up to receive so much more of me. I want to give you so much more. And we settle for such a little, little prize 
Let's be bold today as we unite ourselves with Our Lady, the woman of anticipation, the woman whose whole life was focused on what's to come. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, she says, and my spirit exalts in God my Savior. Let our words be the same in this Holy Mass as we give to the Lord everything we are. 